Okay guys, we're back at Location X and I'll give everybody a 10 second catch up. Location X is a property somewhere in northwestern Illinois. It belongs to my family. It's chock full of derelict old equipment that's been sitting here for between 20 and 30 years. Uh, some of it was in good condition when it was put here. A lot of it was in terrible condition when it was put here. They dragged it out of a junkyard and just squirreled it away down here for future projects and then those future projects never happened. Anything that we can do to clean up the property is a step in the right direction. So now that we got that out of the way, this is an old Inslee dragline crane. I don't know what model it is. Possibly a K-12. I don't know how long it's been here, but I would guess somewhere between 25 and 30 years. Unless they dropped it in here with a helicopter, it was parked there before all these trees grew up around it. So you can see the woven wire fence behind it. That's the edge of the property line. So it was one of the first things that was ever parked down here. So there's only this first section of the boom. The rest of the boom is missing and it's not on this property. But I think I know where it is. So in the highly unlikely event that we get this thing running and functioning, we could put the boom back together. The tracks are, I don't know, kind of old school looking things. Looks like it just has regular pins through the pads. There's no chain, really, so kind of interesting. Somebody's done a modification to the counterweight. They spaced it out from the back of the of the, ha the house here with these big channel irons, I guess just to increase the lifting capacity. It has some kind of a huge six-cylinder flathead engine. I don't know what it is. I suspect it's either a Buddha or... I don't know, a Waukesha or a Continental. It's got the distributor out through the top of the head just like a Continental, but I don't think it's a Continental. It doesn't, I don't know that I've ever seen a Continental that's that big. So the internet says a lot of these, these machines had Buddha engines, so I guess that could be what it is. I don't know. The engine is not stuck. It does turn over. All the glass is missing out of the cab, so this whole operator station has been open that whole time. All of the control levers are frozen, so like I said, in the unlikely event that we get it to run, it'll be quite a project to get all this stuff freed up. Good look at the seat. And there's some rudimentary controls back there. Bunch of big clutches and brakes and stuff in here. So I'm sure this was a drag line crane originally. This is your uh, fair lead or whatever you want to call it for the, the drag line cable. And then, I don't know, various winches inside there. So I guess it must have three winches, one for the boom, one for the, you know, the main cable, lift cable, and then one for the, the drag line cable. Uh, but I don't really know that much about it. Looks like the cables were just kind of laid here willy-nilly when they took the boom apart. I don't know how old this machine is. I can't find any tags or anything on it that would help us identify it. I would suspect it's probably from sometime in the 1950s, maybe the 1960s, I don't know. But this would have been basically like a, a 1950s or 60s version of an excavator. So they weren't really really made for lifting like a, like a crane like we would think of today. These were made for digging. You know, earth moving type stuff. I don't know how much it weighs. Uh, it's certainly too big to haul on my rollback truck, I think. So that's okay. We're going to leave it down here at this property anyway. I, I don't have any use for it. I don't think it has any value. The last one of these I knew about, it had a running Detroit diesel engine and I think all the boom and stuff was there and more or less it was ready to function. The guy was trying to get a thousand bucks for it and he ended up scrapping it. So yeah, they just don't really have any value, but might be something fun to play around with. Well, I don't know what this engine is. If anybody knows, put it down in the comment box. I, there's a tag back here behind the oil fill cap. All it has is just some random numbers and none of them make any sense to me. Like I said, flathead six cylinder engine. I'm not going to take the plugs out. I'm afraid to. You see all this garbage that's packed in around the spark plugs. I'm afraid of rounding them off or stripping them out or causing more damage. So we're just going to leave well enough alone. None of these controls work. So we'll have to kind of unhook all that and start over and then I don't know if this is a 6 volt or a 12 volt system there's a generator and 
what's left of a voltage regulator but yeah I think it's going to become 12 volt because positive ground makes my head hurt That looks like it's multiple choice on the battery cables here. Oh, that one's not hooked up to anything. Okay. I'll be shocked if that thing conducts electricity. Well, guys did not appreciate me using my Swiss Army knife to clean those battery cables on the last video, so. I brought the right tool. Well, let's see what happens. I don't have a lot of confidence in this Farm and Fleet battery shaped object. I brought along my key. We'll go ahead and hook that up. I think there's a starter solenoid down here. Wah, wah, wah. Hey, there we go. <laughs> it sounds pretty sick. Okay, cool. Well, there are some hieroglyphs cast into the side of the block here. I don't know what all that stuff means, but if somebody can decipher that, I'd love to know what this engine is. It's got a Zenith updraft carburetor on it here, just like an old tractor. And like I said, all these controls here for the choke and the throttle are seized up, so we'll have to just disable that but the shafts are free so that's a good sign and then it has this butterfly in the kind of in the intake here see somebody's got some bailing wire on that and then it looks like over here there was some kind of a governor linkage that's been disabled these were probably the stops for that and then I don't see the part of it that would come out of the engine So I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, normally there's like a flyweight on the camshaft and it controls a, a linkage back to the carburetor and that's your governor. But it looks like that's been missing for, for quite a while. So this was probably the original throttle linkage right here. And then there was a bunch of springs and levers and stuff going back to the carburetor. Man, can you imagine running this thing? Putting a 12 hour day in behind these controls. It's like it's like running a bow flex. And then, you know, this is the engine right behind your ear. I don't see any provision for a muffler. Maybe maybe it had one above the hood there at one time, but there certainly isn't one now. Must have been a tough old boy that ran this thing. I'll bet he wore a Stetson and chain smoked Lucky Strikes. Well, I don't know what happened here. Something broke on this brace, or they, they added a brace to it. I'm not sure. And it looks like they cut out the radiator support slash engine mount there for some reason. Well, the ignition looks like a basket case. There's the coil laying in a pile of raccoon poop. Distributor, I'd say that's probably not the original coil since it has a welded on bracket and it's not in the bolted on bracket that's sitting there. I don't see any sign of a ballast resistor. This is the little control panel back here. Definitely no resistor mounted to that. Looks like we had originally a start button here and then this must be the on off switch. Oh, that one actually works. Well, I mean it moves. So it looks like this was probably the original throttle. And then when that stopped working they added 
this guy and then this must be the choke so I don't know where to start with this <laughs> wiring is pretty sketchy and I don't know still I don't know whether it's a 6 or 12 volt system definitely has a generator but there are 12 volt generators only it matters anyway because that voltage regulator is toast so maybe we'll just eliminate that for now set it up as 12 volt positive ground and see what happens it'll run for a while without the ballast resistor or maybe we can find one on something else sneak it on there now well, it looks like the last guy had the same idea so it, this is the negative terminal of the coil you can see it's marked with a little negative right here and this side's the positive positive. and I guess it's possible it's original it says auto light on there and uh, the starters an auto light so anyway They've got the negative side hooked up to the distributor going through the points so that means it's a negative ground already so we don't have to mess with that and like I said there's no resistor but whatever it'll run for a while like that I wonder what those points look like I've been playing around with these switches up here sprayed them down with a little WD-40 and check this out Oh, don't do that. You just worked. Check it out. We got oil pressure. Wow. And yes, I did check the dipstick. It does have oil. And no, I'm not going to change it before we try to start it. Okay, we got power at the positive side of the coil. The problem is these terminals are all so corroded. And this thing's just loosey goosey in here. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Okay. So we definitely don't have any contact on the points. So you guys have seen me do this test before. And this is the standard way that I test a, pretty much any ignition system. It'll work on anything. Doesn't matter if there's points and condenser, electronic ignition, you know, computer controlled, waste spark, etc, etc. Uh, it probably won't work on the new four wire coils. But on this old stuff, this is a, the easiest way to check the points. So I just put the test light on the negative side of the coil here. And you're looking for the light to basically blink, which means that the points are pulling the this side of the coil to ground. And remember, a coil is basically just a transformer, and transformers only work on alternating current. So since we have DC, you know, direct current on the engine, the way that we approximate alternating current is pulsed DC. So the points are going to open and close as the engine turns over. It's going to create a pulsed DC on this side of the coil, the primary side of the coil. That's going to induce a pulsed DC on the secondary side of the coil. And that will jump the gap in the spark plug and create spark. Sorry guys, you're not going to be able to see very well. This is pretty tight. Do not oil felt. Okay. Something seems wrong. What was popping around in here? Okay, I'm going to try to do this on the camera. Got to be a contortionist to fit in here. 
it looks like the points aren't too terrible dirty but they might have a problem the gap might be wrong here so I think we'll clean them first and then we'll we'll try to set the gap so let me bar it over here okay definitely closed now so Hopefully I can do this before my fingers go completely numb. I really hope you guys can see this. All right, I'll show you how I clean points. This is the way my dad taught me how to do it eons ago. And he was the original Nazi about cleaning points. So we will, we will copy his method. I think he spent a lot of time doing this growing up on the farm. So this is fine sandpaper, 400 grit. I've just got it folded over, pinched between the points, and I'm just sanding them lightly. <sighs> so the big thing you want to do with the sandpaper is, is try to take out any pits. Because what happens is, over time, the, the contacts on the points get kind of cratered. And it basically reduces the contact area. Oh, I hope I don't sound like some creeper breathing over your shoulder. It's just, I'm working inside the hood with you guys. All right, you may not be able to see it, but down in the bottom corner, there's still a spot that's pretty, pretty scuzzy looking. I've never really used a point file. I have one, but I find that this works pretty good. Okay, that's not too bad. Now, step two. You get a clean sheet of paper. Stick that between the points and pull out. And you're gonna just keep doing this until the paper comes out perfectly clean. That will take out any of the grit and dust that's left from sanding. Okay, good enough I think. Now we're gonna bar it over until that little cam is on the points here. Wow, there's a Heck of a lot of backlash in that camshaft. Okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. Normal point gap's about 15 thousandths. Okay. Let's try our test again.
Okay, that's it. We've got what we want on the primary side. Now I think we can check for spark. One thing that's kind of worrying, see how dim the bulb is. Either I don't have enough battery, I don't have enough battery cable, or the starter motor is just pulling way too many amps. So we may have to kind of rethink that. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and clean up this janky repair terminal on this positive battery cable. I don't trust these things at all. They're like the scotch lock of battery cables. Ought to be illegal. I guess it's not so bad on this machine because it never gets driven around in salt. But whenever I see one of these repair terminals on a car, I just cut the thing off and buy a new battery cable. Because they, they are absolutely junk. Okay, time to check for spark. I just don't like the way that that fits. Oh well. Anyway, the challenge on this thing is finding something that's a ground. So a lot of guys were asking about this tool in the last video. It's just a spark tester. Uh, this one I think happens to be made by Lyle, but there's a lot of, you know, Chinese knockoff versions of it. You can find this at any auto parts store. I think I bought that one at O'Reilly's. They carry a lot of Lyle stuff. And it, all it does is just, you can adjust the gap and it's basically just a spark plug. So, let's see what happens here. No spark. Okay, I ran a ground all the way from the battery up here to this spark tester. Let's try it one more time. Well, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's definitely spark. Pretty weak, but it definitely has spark. Okay. I'm not sure what we do now. Fuel, I guess. Hard to do this by yourself. I just don't have enough battery. Well, while we're waiting for the battery to charge again. I think we'll figure out something to do with the fuel system here. I did get these control cables freed up, so I do have control over the choke and the throttle from the little operator station up there. I found this linkage laying in the bottom. I think that was probably originally here, like this. And I'm guessing that the throttle was set here, and then they used the governor to control this butterfly. So I don't know, you just set the throttle at wide open, I guess, and then it regulates this one to give you a little extra boost when you need more RPMs. Not exactly sure. It's kind of an odd system, I think. Anyway, looks like somebody's already put a, an electric fuel pump on here. I don't know if it works. I see one of the fittings is completely rotted off. So the, the hose runs into a tank that's underneath of the engine. We're not going to use that. I think to start with, we'll just pop this line off, fill the float bowl up with 
some gas and see how things go. I just I can't get enough RPMs out of it right now to get it to catch. So it ought to start. It's got spark. Well, at least in theory, the plugs might be fouled, but it's got spark, and I know it's got compression because it'll it'll pop the cap up on the exhaust pipe when you're cranking it over. So if we can get some fuel in it, I think we we have a chance of getting it started. All right, that's mixed gas. So, you know, like two-stroke gas, plus a little dash of automatic transmission fluid. Let's see if she'll run on that. I don't know, we got a little something out of it. I heard it skip just to, just one time there. Awesome. It does run. Okay, I don't have any control over the throttle for some reason. My linkage must have froze up again. But yeah, she runs. Holy crap. Okay. Let's jam a little more fuel in it. We'll work on this linkage. And I think we're going to have a runner. Alright, we'll try it again. I'll give her a little sniff of the good stuff here. All right, we'll try it one more time. It acts like it's just running on the starting fluid and it's not going to catch off of what's in the carb. So we may have to take that carb apart and clean it out. So I decided just to pull the carb off. It's pretty easy to do. We'll crack her open and see what we find out. Well, maybe the float valve is stuck. So there's no fuel in it. Well, whatever that is, is plugged solid. Wrong screwdriver, fella. Okay, that one's plugged. That's our main jet. And that one's plug solid. 
Yeah, she wasn't going to work. Okay, I guess we might as well crack the thing open. The problem is I'm, I'm probably going to ruin the gasket when I do that, so... Yeah, I guess we'll just deal with that when we get to it. Oh, good, that one's all the way in. <laughs> Well, I did tear the gasket when I cracked it open. I think what I'm going to do is take this back to my shop where I can really work on it. And we'll either have to find a gasket or, or possibly make one. Looks like the rain may be coming in anyway, so it's probably a good time to pack up. And I'll come back to this old girl, I don't know, with a fresh battery and a hopefully cleaned carburetor. And we'll see if we can, we can make her go. I mean, we know it runs. We just got to make it run right. All right guys, I think we're gonna cut it off here kind of as the end of part one. I'm pretty sure I've got plenty of, of footage to put together a video at this point. So if you wanna find out if I get the carburetor fixed and get the engine running properly, I guess you'll have to tune in for part two. And I promise you that part two is coming. And depending on how well part one and maybe part two do, we'll determine how far we go with this project. I do believe that the rest of the boom for the crane exists and maybe the bucket and some other attachments or hardware I don't know and I'm willing to go get it but I'll have to go almost all the way to Nebraska to get those those pieces and bring them back here and then I don't know what kind of condition they're going to be in or what's going to be missing when we get here so that's still kind of a long shot at this point we're going to see if we can get it to run and we're going to see how well the video does on on the old YouTube I know the bad weather's coming so we're running out of time to do this kind of stuff but if you guys like these kind of videos Give her a thumbs up, and if you want to see more of these videos in the future, go ahead and become a subscriber. And I promise you there's, there's plenty more where, where that thing came from. Uh, also, if anybody can tell me what kind of engine that is, I would like to know. Uh, it could be a Hercules, could be a Buddha, could be a Continental, could be a Waukesha, I really don't know. Could be, I don't know, could be some kind of a, I don't know, Plymouth or something like that. I don't have any idea. And if anybody knows specifically what model of Inslee Crane this is and approximately how old it is I would also like to know that and then uh, if anybody knows or has a, any information about the governor linkage for the the carburetor on this engine kind of like to see what that looks like because I got a hunch it's gonna be a real dog without without a functioning governor but I guess that's still kind of a long ways off so thanks guys for watching and I'll see you the next time <laughs>